Hello everyone, welcome to Game Tech UK and Ride 4. In this video, I'm going to take you through the improvements over Ride 3, what to expect in the game, what to expect in the career. I've had the game for a couple of weeks now, so I can give you my thoughts and opinions on Ride 4. So let's get on with today's video. So for this video, I'm going to be using the PlayStation 4 version of the game. And you can see here, simply from the welcome screen, the level of detail in these bike models is unsurpassed in any bike video game that I've ever seen. That's my R6. I've customized it. I've taken the number plate off, changed the tires. You can really make it personal here. This game reminds me of that feeling I had with Gran Turismo 1 all them years ago of owning the bike, customizing the bike, really making it your own. The Graphics here are fantastic. Here you can see just some of the updated graphical models for each bike. Here is a picture of the MV Augusta in Ride 3 on the left and Ride 4 on the right. You can see here the work that has gone on in the game to rework absolutely everything graphically. Same for the Kawasaki, you can see Ride 3 on the left, Ride 4 on the right, amazing level of detail. This is really becoming photorealistic and this is from the PlayStation 4 as well. This isn't next gen yet, this isn't the PlayStation 5 version, this is current gen and it's looking fantastic. There's going to be 176 of these monsters included in the base game and a further 81 are going to be available through DLC both paid for and free. The same can be said for the tracks as well. Here we've got a comparison on Laguna Seca. You can see the amount of detail in the banners, the tyres underneath the bridges. This is all going to go in to build that immersion of you racing around these fantastic locations around the world. We've got 30 tracks in day one. There's going to be four additional tracks in the way of paid for DLC and free DLC. For the first time ever in the ride series, we've got a completely dynamic system for lighting and weather. So that means you can start the race in the sun in the morning, it can progress through to night time and at any time it could pour with rain. Not too bad when you're in a car, put yourself on two wheels, that makes this game very unpredictable and very exciting. Another new feature to ride for is endurance racing. Once you've chosen your endurance equipped bike, you can do endurance races, anything from 20 minutes to 24 hours. You can start on foot, which just looks absolutely fantastic. You can of course start on the grid as well. We've also got pitting. The pit animation is absolutely so immersive. You have to choose your tires, front and back, choose whether you want fuel and away you go. This is gonna be fantastic for long races. Now with Ride 4 you're going to be spending a lot of your time in the career and the career is made up of different leagues. You've got the European League, the Asian League and the American League. In each league you have a regional license to obtain and these are actually really difficult. I spent absolutely ages trying to get them. Um, I didn't get goals on any of them. This is harking back again to mention Gran Turismo 1. The license test in that was down to the milliseconds of of you obtaining the license and that's what Ride 4 license testing is all about. It doesn't give it to you easy. You have to really work at it. Once you've obtained that license, you can then start looking at what cups there are. And each individual cup will have races within there, and each cup will have a reward bike as well. So if I complete these, for example, you get given for your collection the Triumph Speed Triple. Now, annoyingly for me, I have been grinding away for almost two weeks, unlocking all the events and all the cups. But unfortunately, my save got corrupted. So I've just gone back through, done the license and just done the first few cups. You also get invited to exhibitions from manufacturers as well. Another cool feature of the career is that if you are a brand enthusiast, say you like riding for Yamaha or say Honda, the game will tailor itself to your likings and it'll offer you events from those manufacturers for you to try out or be an official racer. It just customises the career to your taste. Of course there's multiplayer and I'm sure this is where you'll be spending a lot of your time in Ride 4. The great news here is that they are hosted servers from Ride 4 so the netcode should be spot on. There's enough options here to set up races to your heart's content. So before we go to the track, let's look at some bike models. So this is the Aprilla RSV4, 200 horsepower. These are just some of my favorite bikes in the game. But what I want to show you here is just the, the just crazy amount of detail. It is 
unbelievable they are absolutely beautiful and you can't zoom in any closer i would like the opportunity to zoom in just a little bit closer but that is as close as we can get another amazing machine ducati 999r two cylinder 150 horsepower and a thousand cc look at the incredible amount of detail in this bike model Another beautiful classic, this time the Honda VFR 750 RC30, single swing arm, four cylinder, 112 horsepower. It's beautiful and amazingly represented in Ride 4. It's got all today's street bikes as well. This is the 2019 Honda Fireblade, 192 horsepower, again represented just absolutely perfectly. So let's get to customization. An important part of the ride series is being able to own and customize that bike to your liking. As I said earlier, this is my R6. I've already done a few bits to it, but let's have a look at what can be changed. First up is the engine. You start on the stock, obviously. I've already upgraded to engine kit one. I didn't realize where I've been grinding away. I've got a little bit more credit for engine kit two. So let's install that. Over to the exhaust, if you look on the right hand side of the screen on the performance chart, you can see some of these exhausts take power, some add power. Also, it's all what pleases you aesthetically. Transmission is nice and simple. You either have the standard or the racing transmission. The brakes, obviously, outside of stopping the bike even quicker, they also reduce weight as well. You've got the stock suspension or the racing suspension, which can be used in bike tuning. You can upgrade the chain, it doesn't affect performance in any way, it does just mean that you can paint it. The rim section is where you get to personalise your bike and put your stamp on it. Interestingly, all the aftermarket wheels are actually heavier than the stock. Not by much, but they are heavier, but there is enough choice to keep you flicking through these for hours. Over to tyres, these are all real life brands and models as well. And you will notice that over on the right on the performance tab, it does affect the S rating of the bike, depending on which one you choose. This is quite a cool feature. You can actually remove the mirrors, which I have done. I think it looks way better. I've actually done the same thing to the number plate and the indicators as well. Again, I think it looks way better. Once you've upgraded your bike, you can go to the bike setup screen. Now, they've actually simplified this, so there's not a huge amount to do. You know, you can set preload, you can change your front and rear shock absorbers, you can also change the transmission as well, and you can do basic calibrations like make the acceleration more aggressive or softer. If you want to make your bike really individual to you and spend the time making a livery, you can do just that. You've got up to a thousand layers, you can put lots of stickers and make all your own logos. I don't think at this stage, you can import anything in like you can in Gran Turismo Sport for example but it's all there on the bike and you can make your own complete livery. You can do exactly the same to the helmet as well so if you wanted to sort of create a corporate feel of branding across your fleet you can do just that. Same for the race suit as well and in Ride 4 there's 17 new brands of rider wear as well that can all be customised. So let's head out to the track with various bikes, different times of day and weather settings as well.
Now all that footage was third person and that's how I like to play the game, but you can see here various onboard camera modes that add an incredible amount of realism and immersion, but it also does make the difficulty level as hard as nails. Now of course, as with any video game, there are annoyances, and I have got a couple, albeit small annoyances, with Ride 4. One of them is the bullying nature of the AI. There have been times where I've had to restart a race time and time again, depending on what happens at turn one. If you go in too slow, they rub your back wheel from behind. If you try and keep up with the pack, they invariably swipe you out from on the inside. It can be quite frustrating. One of my main frustrations with the game comes to time trial challenges. Say for example you crash in the time trial, you have to wait for the animation to happen, then go to the summary screen. Now I choose to restart, and obviously yes I want to restart. Then you have to wait to go back to the menu, wait for Ride 4 to load. Then the autopilot becomes a bit of an issue as you saw in the endurance race. There's a lot of autopilot, but that means there's about 20 seconds in between each try of time trial challenge before you can start again and that does get a bit frustrating so you can probably tell from watching this review i really do genuinely love this game i think it's the best bike racing video game i've seen and played i think it's better than moto gp20 i think it's got better graphics better handling it's got a far better roster of bikes and i think it really does feel like a complete racing game it's frustrating it's hard I don't know how they do it. If you're going to go to racing, for example, there's all that extra equipment that you can buy to really get that sort of simulator feel. Same with flight sims. There's a lot of equipment you can buy to really immerse yourself. I don't know how they do it, but all you've got here is the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox controller, and yet it feels like a simulator. You're stressed. You're on edge all the time. You can't take your eyes off the road for a second. You've got to worry about what everyone is doing around you. It feels exciting, frustrating, real. I love it. However, it could be that level of difficulty and realism that puts a lot of players off the game. Certainly new people thinking about coming into the ride series for the very first time. Just know there's going to be a huge amount of practice that you're going to need to invest and time that you're going to need to spend in the game. Learning the tracks, learning the bikes, learning completely new lines from, say, a racing game. But just know if you do get the game and you do hit that wall of frustration, it is worth it. Once you nail that corner just right or you get that time in time trial you've been on, after it is so rewarding so there you go i hope this video has been of use to you in your purchase decision for ride 4 and don't forget if you are getting it for this generation and you are upgrading to an xbox series x or s you will get the upgrade free through xbox smart delivery if you're buying the playstation 4 version and you are going to purchase a playstation 5 you've got until april next year to get the free upgrade to the next gen version but that is it everyone have a lovely day and i'll see you in the next one